since spending the last three months here in New Zealand, we've learned quite a bit about Kiwi culture and climate. We've learned New Zealand is the first country in the world to see the morning sunrise, and the first country to give women the right to vote back in 1893. We learned that there are about 43 million sheep, which is about nine times that of the human population in New Zealand. And there are absolutely no snakes. Summer is December through February, and winter is June, July, and August. So while America is melting and watching the 4th of July fireworks, New Zealanders are bundling up and donning wetsuits to enjoy the winter activities. battery because I'm stupid and I left the battery switch on. It drained everything out because the radio and the navigation. The yeah. In the dinghy. Yeah, yeah, it's dead. Dad tried to jump it or whatever. It didn't work. It's dead. On our trip to town today, I also bought a handful of DVDs. Since many people have asked, I'll show you how we digitalize our video library so we can watch them on the big screen or on multiple devices without having to store thousands of actual DVDs. We rip the movie file off the disc using a program called Make MKV. It's a free download for Windows or Mac. And I've learned that as long as we don't distribute our movies to anyone else, it's basically legal. But don't ask to borrow our movies. In the meantime, while you're waiting for the movie to rip, make yourself a cup of coffee. Or maybe play a round of words with friends. Once it's done ripping, I like to compress it using a program called Handbrake, which basically cuts the file size in half without losing any quality. As you can see here, the movie I'm ripping, JFK, is 7.36 gigs, which is huge. Once we compress it, it should be down to about 1 or 2 gigs. Once that gets going, it'll take about 15 to 20 minutes, so find something to do, like changing the battery in your dinghy. When Handbrake is finished, Note that this movie was shrunk down to 1.16 gigs. I transfer the movies to a jump drive, and then put the jump drive into my NAS system that you can find on Amazon or on our website by clicking on Boat Gear, Household, and you'll see the Network Attached Storage System link to Amazon. Once I transfer it to the Plex program on my laptop, which is a subscription-based service, but it runs about five bucks a month, I can log into our Plex server, which is located on the NAS on our boat, and without any internet at all, while on passage or sitting at anchor in some subtropical location, I can scroll through our entire library of movies and music, and I can watch a movie here, while others on the boat can be watching something entirely different on a different device, as long as they're logged into the Plex server. Here is the JFK disk I just transferred. I also use an app called Play On Cloud to download any movie purchases I've made through Amazon Prime. Play On isn't free, but it's very, very cheap. Through the app, I request the download, they send the movie link to my laptop, and I again transfer it onto the Plex server using a jump drive. So this is a pretty easy way to digitalize your DVD library for personal offline use. And as all of us on Zatara are really into movies, it works out really well for us. Hey, we need to go get propane today. Do we have an extra one? Like a whole extra? How many do we have? So now we have four American style propane tanks. Five five kilo tanks. All right, let's go get propane. All right. Have you figured out where the blinker is and the windshield wipers? Yeah. Accurately yet? Yeah. Part of it. So we always put our name on our Beck gas bottles. Because there's always 
a big uh, batch of them. <laughs> I always go out of them. Over here it's Z A T A R A. They don't have a Z, they have a Z. I think that's kind of neat. How much does a propane tank cost and filling and all that? I think that was a $300 tank. $300 New Zealand dollars? Uh, yeah, uh, or $200, $200 New Zealand tank. And then how much is it to fill every time? I don't know. What is that, a 6 kg tank? Uh, yeah, yes, maybe 5 kg. Yeah. yeah. And how much does it cost to fill? How much does it cost to fill that? It's all depends on the like 5 kg, $3.90 for a kg. So nearly, nearly $20 nearly. So 20, 20 New Zealand. So what did you yeah. say, $3.90? $3.90 for a kg. Yeah, $3.90 kg. a kg. A kg. So, okay, I'll figure what that is and put it on the screen. So it'll be about $20. <laughs> it'll be about $20 New Zealand, New Zealand dollars for a, okay. a 5 uh, kg tank. 5 kilograms. Everything's metric. That's four bottles. So are we gonna watch a movie, y'all? What kind of a movie? I don't know. Let's come look. Hey. Here you look well. I'll choose a snack. Okay, Finn, will you grab the blankets? From grab downstairs, a couple of blankets. <sighs> no, not that one again. That no. There you go, make a movie. Let's watch Anchorman. No. Okay. Okay, I like Mom that. that one's watch. Uh, Mom, what do you want to watch? Uh, who doesn't like Ron think. Burgundy? Keep going, going out. Keep going out. Let's watch Aliens. Let's go to the Matrix. No, 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 no. Okay, no, no, no. have you Matrix. even seen the Matrix? Mom Mama Mia. Mia. Oh, okay. Uh, Anything uh, for that, please. <laughs> <laughs> Anything for okay. Mama Mia. Uh, oh, everybody loves the Matrix. They're making a fourth one. That's like red pill, blue pill. I've seen some of it. I don't like it. Take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want. No way. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Now what? I don't know. Hey guys, welcome to this week's edition of the Q&A. First question out of the box is from Kevin Brimage, and he asks, on a monohole, you had a furling mainsail. And on the cat, you have a lazy jack. Which one do you prefer and why? Well, I tell you, that's a great question, Kevin, and thanks for watching the show. That is a, uh, you know, I don't mind either one. I, I, I like the uh, furling cell because I could do everything back in the cockpit. And I could probably rig this cell so I didn't have to go up on the deck to do that. But it's super easy to drop this cell. I mean, when you need to drop a cell fast, the ones in the lazy jacks just drop. Bam, they're done. Putting it up. You got to turn into the wind and, and putting them up and... Uh, Reefing them is a little more complicated, but uh, if, I think if I had my choice, uh, I think I'd probably choose the Lazy Jack system over the furling mainsail. Now, I'd like to try the, the, the boom where you have a furling boom mainsail. A lot of the big mega yachts have that furling boom, and a lot of other boats do that now. And I'd like to see how that works, because I like the ease of everything rolling up and always being kind of self-contained and, and getting rid of the Lazy Jacks altogether. But uh, that's my take on it. So thanks for watching, and thanks for the question. Moving right along, Roger Wilco asks, red right returning, why is the red marker in on the left when coming into that marina? Well, that's a great question. A lot of people want to know that. In America, we're taught red right returning means when you're coming up to those red buoys and they're on your right side, you would be returning to land. You would be entering a canal that's going to take you to land or entering in, into a land area. And most of the world is not that way. I'm, there's a few places that are way, but most of the world is the red is on the left and uh, green is on the right and uh for or you know it's just red and green uh actually i'm screwed up there red right returning is in america that is not the way it is in most of the world most of the world is uh uh the green is on the left 
or the green is on the right. I'm getting so confused. <laughs> so what you want to do is you don't want to listen to me because if you listen to me, you won't be returning the land at all. You'll just be going in a circle out there. With that being said, red right turning is a United States thing, and I think a few other countries do that, but most of the world is the opposite. So thanks for watching, and great question. Next one up is uh, from Roy Dana, Roy Dana Force. Uh, it looks like no one is doing the actual sailing, but they're definitely moving. How does this work? No such thing as autopilot, is there, for sailing? Well, that's a great question, Dana. Rory, Dana. Uh, yes, most boats have autopilots on them, and our boat has autopilot, and we can st we set the autopilot on a heading or on a, on a wind angle, and we can the boat will steer itself whatever we program the autopilot to do. Auto heading mode means the boat's gonna if I want to go 300 degrees magnetic 300, the boat's gonna go 300 degrees. It's gonna hold that heading no matter what the wind's doing. If I go to a wind angle, it's gonna if I've got wind on the beam, let's say I've got wind 90 degrees off the, the port side and I set 90 degrees in there on the port side, the boat is going to steer itself so that the wind always stays 90 degrees on the port side of the boat. You also got uh, a destination, you can autopilot to a destination and, and different things like that. So yes, most boats have autopilots or wind vanes or different kinds of things to help take the load off of steering. And once again, thanks for watching Roy and thanks for the question. Let's see, next one is from Nick Hasser. Nick asked me, what do you do for land-based transportation when visiting, when visiting various places? Do you have a rental car, SUV? Do marinas have equivalent of crew cars like many uh, general aviation airports? Great question, Nick. No, most marinas don't have crew cars. I wish that was, but there's just so many boats in there. That would be nice if they did. They do, however, a lot of marinas have shuttles that'll take you to and from the town centers or, or certain places like that. Uh, most places have rental cars. We rent a lot of cars when we're on land and like here in New Zealand we, we, we've been fortunate enough to have some friends of ours who loaned us a car. Uh, if we were going to be in a destination for a long period of time we'd probably buy a cheap uh, car and then sell it when we left there. You know, don't spend much because rent, renting cars can be very very expensive so if you know you're going to be someplace for three or four months it's, it's probably better to buy a, a car if you want the land-based transportation. But uh, once again, thanks for uh, watching the show and great question. For all you guys out there who watch the show and all the new subscribers out there, thanks for, for watching. And any of you who don't know, click the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell. It'll tell you when a new show is coming out. Follow us on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and the kids have some accounts. I don't know what they are, but Renee will list all those. And uh, tell them how much you like them or, or do you don't like them. We love hearing your comments. We like reading all the comments. It can be very entertaining, I can tell you that. And once again, I look forward to seeing you guys out there on the water.